we've got boilers in the primary loop here with constant speed pumps and then we have pumps and coils and all the system out here in the secondary and a variable speed system for that. This is the traditional method for piping boilers. You can pipe almost any boiler in this arrangement. Now before we get into piping uh, any further, let's review how you calculate the BTUs. There has to be a heat balance between the primary and secondary loops. And we calculate that with this particular formula, 500 being our constant, right? 8.33 times 60, the weight of water times 60 minutes, that's our 500 constant times GPM times the delta T. So here we have 100 GPM and a 40 degree delta T giving us 2 million BTUs. We're going to use that throughout this uh, seminar. Why 40 degree delta T? You remember, lower return water temperatures mean more efficiency. So instead of designing for 20, we're starting to see designers stretch to 30 and 40 degree delta T. It means smaller pumps, saves you some money. Um, it also means lower return water temperatures, also saving more money. So let's start with this primary secondary example. There are three possible conditions that can exist in primary secondary. No more, no less. Either the flow is equal in the primary and secondary, or one is greater than the other. Primary flow greater than secondary flow, or primary flow is less than secondary flow. Those are the three things that can happen. Everything in perfect balance, primary flow equal to secondary, or the primary and secondary out of balance. And that is okay. The heat will balance, just the flow rates won't. And that's why primary and secondary works so well. It changes efficiencies on you sometimes, and we'll talk about that as we move forward. So, Primary flow equal to secondary flow, what does that look like? Well, it's basic. A 2 million BTU load, my boiler is on, and I have 100 GPM in my primary loop supplying 140 degree water. I'm designing around 140 degrees. Why would I want to do that? Because at a 40 degree delta T, I come back at 100 degrees, and that's very good for efficiency in my boiler. So, 100 GPM in my secondary loop going out at 140 degrees, and I have no flow in the common pipe. <laughs> Excuse me. Because I have 100 GPM going out into my secondary loop, I also have 100 GPM coming back. And because in this scenario we're perfectly loaded, which rarely happens, uh, we have a 100 degree return water temperature coming back. That means my entering boiler temp is also 100 degrees because I have 100 GPM going into my boiler. Everything is perfect in an equilibrium, right? Temperatures are exactly the way we wanted it, flows are exactly the way we wanted it. Rarely ever does that happen. So, more than likely, you're going to see something else. But let's think about this example for just a minute. Boiler number two is off. Boiler number two is on. And it's running wide open at 2 million BTUs. Is there a better way to do this? Remember this, the efficiency curve that we showed you? That boilers operating at 50% are more efficient than boilers operating at 100% fire in this condensing type product? Hmm. Maybe we should do system efficiency optimization, we call it, where you run both boilers maybe at part load. Here's an example of that. <clears throat> we see this specified a lot. And if you're specifying this on primary, secondary, make sure you're getting uh, what was promised or what was advertised. You've got to pay attention to the return water temperature in the primary, um, especially when the primary flow is greater than secondary. With the constant flow primary variable flow secondary, system efficiency staging might not be the most efficient. Let's look at that. So I've decided to turn on the second boiler and let them both run at 50%. But because we are constant flow in the primary, I'm running two pumps. I now have 200 GPM in the primary loop, right? Two 100 GPM pumps supplying 140 degree water to the common pipe and to the secondary zone. Remember, I haven't changed the load out on the secondary. I'm still 2 million BTUs. So my flow rate hasn't changed in the secondary. I have 100 GPM going out to my building, and now I have 100 GPM going across the common pipe because we're not using it in the secondary. And this is how primary secondary works. It's perfectly okay, perfectly normal. My supply water temp is 140. My return flow rate and temperature is 100 GPM and 100 degrees. Again, I've got 2 million BTUs worth of load. But what happens down here at the entering boiler temp? Because I have 100 GPM of 140 degree water coming down my common pipe, mixing with 100 GPM of 100 degree water, my entering boiler temperature has gone up to 120 degrees. Here's the question. Is that more efficient? Well, let's take a look. Remember the chart? 
here we are, return water temperature of 100 degrees is where we started, right? So now we're at about 93.5% efficient. We decided instead of running one boiler at 100%, we'd run two boilers at 50%. So now those boilers are operating at about 95 and a half, 95 and a quarter percent efficient. So we've moved in the right direction. But shortly after turning on the second pump and the second boiler, my return water temperature increases because of the mixing in the common pipe, and we went to 120 degree return water temperature, dropping my efficiency down to right around 91%. So we've actually gone the wrong way. Um, and this is what happens a lot with system efficiency optimization and constant flow primary, variable flow secondary. So do we want to do that? Maybe in a water source heat pump job, we might want to consider it when our loop temperatures are very low. But in a job where we've designed around 120, 140, 160 degrees, it might not be the best idea. System efficiency optimization in theory works great. In practice, maybe not so well. So, that kind of puts us in the primary greater than secondary flow. Doesn't mean that's always bad. Sometimes we have to have primary flow greater than secondary. You always want to make sure you have enough boilers to meet the load. Let's look what happens here. I've got two boilers on. Now why am I running two boilers? Well, because my secondary is 110 GPM at 40 degree delta T, which is over 2 million BTUs, which means I have to run two boilers, right? To meet the load. I have 110 GPM coming into the secondary through the secondary pump. I'm supplying 104 degree return water. I have 90 GPM going down my common pipe at 140 degrees. And I have 110 GPM at 100 degree return coming back from the building. And we're mixing again now at 118. Um, again, not as efficient as if we were running one boiler, but one boiler wouldn't catch the load, right? Our loop would continue to get colder and people would be uncomfortable, so we have to run two boilers. This is sort of the disadvantage and advantages of primary and secondary. You can run multiple boilers, but your flow rates and temperatures are going to change, and your efficiency is going to move around based on whether primary is greater than secondary. Okay? It's perfectly all right. But what happens if primary flow is less than secondary? I mean, if primary flow is greater than secondary, it means sometimes our return water temperatures are elevated. Maybe we want to run primary flow less than secondary. Well, when that happens, it usually means there's been a load in, in, introduced into the secondary than more than the boiler, the boiler running or two boilers running can handle. What does that look like? So we're running at 2 million BTUs. Um, let's say we're in a hotel and there's a conference room or a, a, a ballroom down the hall and they've decided to open it up for an event. Maybe that room was kept at a lower temperature. When that room is finally turned on or set into occupied mode, the two-way valves go open on the air handling units, and we get a dump of water into the loop, right? Or we get a, a, a load dumped into the loop. When that happens, the flow rate's gonna go up in the secondary. So all of a sudden, our flow rate goes up to 150 GPM when it was at 100 GPM. Now I have 50 GPM in my common pipe, but it's going up this way and mixing here. What happens then? Well, the supply temperature drops because I'm mixing 50 GPM of 100 degree water with 100 GPM of 140 degree water, making 150 GPM of 127 degree water. If you design for 140 and you only get 127, you might have comfort complaints. You probably will. So what does that mean? We need to turn on the second boiler. So we'll have 150 GPM of 100 degree water coming back. We need to turn that second boiler on, otherwise you'll have the comfort complaints. This is also why in primary and secondary, we like to see our boilers looking at the secondary loop supply, this 127 degrees area right here, so that we know when it's time to bring on another boiler. When the secondary flow is greater than the primary flow, the supply water temperature will drop. So, we don't typically operate there, that just took very long, that just tells us we need to turn on that second boiler, okay? <clears throat> now, when we turn on the second pump, what happens? Remember, we were primary flow less than secondary, but now, because they're not perfectly matched, we're gonna go right back to where we were earlier with primary being greater than secondary. So we'll have both pumps on, supplying 140 degree water, both boilers on. Our load didn't change here, remember, we're still at 150 GPM. Now, though, in our common pipe, instead of having 50 GPM flowing up and dropping the supply temp, 
we're going to have 50 GPM running down the common pipe and changing our entering boiler temperature. But what also happens? We end up with 140 degree supply water temperature out to the secondary. We have 150 GPM coming back from the secondary. We have 100 degree return water temperature and our running boiler temp now is 110 degrees. Remember, when we turn on primary pump number two, the primary flow increased 200 GPM, but the secondary flow remained at 150. So there's some advantages and disadvantages, right, of constant flow primary, variable flow secondary. Um, the advantages being there's no flow through an off boiler. There's simple staging. Boiler flow will always stay within its limits. So let's take a look at what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of constant flow primary and variable flow secondary. Some of the advantages, uh, no flow through an off boiler, right? Whenever you cut a boiler off, the pump goes off. So you don't have those stack losses um, that can happen on a boiler when you run through, when you, flow, when you have flow rate going through the boiler and it not running. Uh, simple staging, the boiler is always gonna stay within its flow limits. You don't have to worry about two pumps running through a boiler or a, a pump only going half flow through a boiler. You just nice, simple, turn the boiler on, the pump comes on, turn the boiler off, the pump goes off. Another advantage is that this system, this layout will work with water tube or fire tube products. It works great with condensing, it works great with non-condensing. You can apply just about any product in constant flow primary, variable flow secondary. Now what are some of the disadvantages? Well, you definitely have to have a balance valve. Uh, well, you should. Um, some way to balance flow across the boiler. A lot of people use a balance valve, and if you do, that's some pump energy, right? Um, also, the boiler return temperature increasing is the primary flow exceeds secondary, which is gonna happen a, you know, a fair amount of the time. Again, it's not the end of the world, it's how it's designed, but you will get some uh, return water temperature fluctuation. Now, definitely a disadvantage being that it doesn't allow for effective system efficiency staging, at least in your typical HVAC system. Remember, water source heat pumps will still work fairly well in this area.